In this video, we're gonna talk about client success for your online coaching business. That's right, guys. And in this video specifically, we're gonna show you how to dial in your coaching session structure, exactly what to say and what to do on your coaching calls to get your clients results. Let's jump in. All right, you guys, welcome back to our How to Launch Your Online Coaching Business in 30 Day series. If we have not met yet, we are Jeff and Jess. We're a couple of online business coaches and we built two six-figure online coaching businesses, both within 90 days, completely organically. And now we're sharing with you the lessons we learned along the way to shortcut your success. That's right, guys. In this video, we're gonna be talking about client success. We're in that series right now. So in case you haven't watched the previous videos, go watch them, they're really banging. But in this video specifically, we're gonna talk about your coaching call structure, exactly what to say and do on these coaching calls to keep your clients happy, get all of their questions answered, mm -hmm. and make sure that they keep getting results week to week with you. So buckle up, this is gonna be a fun one. Should I'm excited. We, should we jump in? Let's go. So here's what we're gonna cover. One, choosing your coaching call schedule, one-to-one -one versus group. Two, how to structure your coaching call sessions and three coaching call session example templates. First, let's talk about choosing your call schedule one-to-one -one versus group. For one-to-one -one clients, we suggest you set up one hour weekly calls with them. Pretty simple. I don't think there's anything else we need to say on that one. No, let's just talk about group. I'm in. For group coaching clients, we suggest you do two or more one hour calls a week in different time zones. So this is really important and we kind of found this one out the hard way as well, mm -hmm. but doing it in different time zones is very important because you're probably working with clients globally. You'll have some in Australia, you have some in the US and Europe. And so by having those two different time zones, the AM, you'll have a call in the AM and then the next call will be in the PM time. That way everyone can make it to at least one of those calls. Right, and so we also found out like there's so many insights that we've gleaned along the way. And one of them is you kind of have to optimize for two major time zones. Exactly. You can't optimize for all three. And so an example of what we would consider all three mm -hmm. is the time zone that works for the Americas, the time zone that works for Europeans and the time zone that works for Australians. Mm -hmm. You can't really optimize for all three at the same time. You kind of got to pick two. Exactly it. And the way you would really figure that out is who are you attracting from around the world? Are you getting mostly Americans and Europeans? Okay, let's optimize for those two time zones. So you can kind of gauge it. Again, that's why we start with those five one-to-ones because you can really get a lot of data from it, but you'll begin to see where the trends are happening. Tip, ideally you want to stack all of your coaching calls on one to two days a week. So for example, we do coaching calls on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, so what's the benefit of doing that? Well, it really simplifies things for you and your clients. They know, okay, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, in our case, I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna get my questions answered. I'm gonna have it on my schedule recurring for my 90 days. So they get into a nice rhythm with you. Right, and just to specify when we say like, group all of your coaching calls on one day if possible or two days if possible. Mm -hmm. If you have a group coaching program, make sure you don't have two calls on one day, spread them out throughout the week. And the best way to do them is to leave at least one day or two days between them. Yeah. That way people are only within 48 hours away essentially from getting a really in-depth question answered from you. Exactly. And so just pulling it back to starting out with those five one-to-one -one clients, if you have if you're able, what we love to do is stack them all on one day. So Thursdays would be our big coaching call day. And we'd take all of our clients on that day. And it was great because then we had the other days of the week to, you know, work on the program, enjoy some lifestyle, do all the things that we want to do. But, you know, if you want to spread those out, let's say you don't want to have five clients on a Thursday, that's fine. You can have two on a Tuesday and three on a Thursday, but that way you're breaking it up. But you still have two designated days for calls. Right, it allows you to get into that coaching mindset, essentially. Like we like to separate sales calls usually from <laughs> coaching call days. It's just kind of a different mindset, but like it also helps out more so with women. For guys, like we don't really care as much what we look like, but with women, like if you're getting ready for these coaching calls, then it makes sense to only have to get ready once or twice throughout the week. You know, 100%. Like gussy yourself up then like every single day of the week, just making sure you have to have 
the makeup on and stuff, it's, that'd be exhausting. It would be exhausting. Thank you for taking us into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, I'm in your corner. I get yes. it. You're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about how to structure your coaching call sessions. Celebrate wins. We start calls with wins because it reminds clients of their progress and creates a positive loop. So let me stop you right there. Mm -hmm. Jess, what's the difference on celebrating wins in a coaching call for a one-to-one -one client and then celebrating wins with multiple clients on a group coaching call? Very good question. So I'm gonna start with the group coaching call. So in a group coaching call, when it comes to celebrating wins, you're gonna be having probably a few people on that call. And so it's important to stick to just one win per person because the wins could take up the entire coaching call and all of a sudden none of the questions are being answered. So sticking to just one big win for the week, like, oh, I closed two clients or, you know, I dropped two dress sizes or whatever it is, like that is the big win for the week. Versus in a one-to-one, -one, you have a little bit more freedom there. And if they have just all these wins, like let them fly, let them go and tell you all their wins because you have extra time there because it's just one person you're dealing with. Beautifully said. Thank you. Nothing to add. <laughs> lessons learned. We ask clients to share their lessons learned. So yeah, we do this next right after celebrating wins mm -hmm. and it really gets clients to think cr critically. So that's a tough one to say. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> so same question that I just asked you, what's mm -hmm. the difference with asking lessons learned mm -hmm. for clients in a group coaching setting and then a one-to-one -one setting? Same reason as for the wins. In a group setting, just have them say one lesson learned. That's like, that is hard to say. One lesson learned because in a group, lessons learned could go on for a really long time. Remember, we have to, a lot of people to consider, we have to answer questions, make sure everyone's taken care of. So just one, your biggest lesson learned. And then in the one-to-one -one setting, again, you just have more time, so it's one-to-one. -one. So let them fly, let them say, hey, these are all my lessons learned. Beautifully said, and the cool thing about making people on a group call really dial in on just their biggest lesson learned or their biggest win is it makes them really think critically. Yep. Yeah. And they come prepared too once they understand like, okay, every week I'm gonna be asked my win and my lesson learned and they come very prepared. So that mm -hmm. lesson learned is a great lesson learned and it's also so good for everyone else to hear as a reminder of what this lesson is. Right, and it has some social accountability so in there built in as well, which is great because yep. they know on the next coaching call, Jess or you as the coach is gonna be hitting them up. Like, all right, so Cindy, like biggest win for the week, hit us with it. And she better be coming with a win <laughs> or else she's not making progress. And so Cindy doesn't want to look like a fool. So Cindy's going to be like, okay, you know, she's going to be working real hard, extra hard those days before the call. Yeah. I'm just going to put in a little note here too is because not everyone is going to have a monumental win every single week. So in our case, not everyone is gonna be having a 10K day every single week, but everyone will be having micro wins every single week. They'll be making progress little by little. So making sure not to skip over the wins and and help people if they're like, I don't have any wins. And it's like, well, did for us, you know, did you book a call? That is a huge win. <laughs> did you propose a call? That is a huge win. Let's celebrate that. So not making it like, okay, monumental wins. That's all we care about. Make sure to celebrate those tiny little victories that they reach in between too. Yeah, we're all at different phases of our journey. So like yeah. for fat loss, for example, let's say that one client lost 10 pounds that week. That'd be ridiculous. It'd be like, <laughs> oh my gosh, great win. But we wouldn't want to feel the client right after that when we asked them for their win, like, so what's your win? Oh, we'll actually gain some weight. Like they'd feel kind of bad about themselves, but then through asking the right questions, it's like, well, what did you do right this week? Yeah. It's like, well, you know what? I didn't have a second dessert this week. When they usually have, you know, a few desserts, like, oh, that's a win. Okay, yeah. step in the right decision, and step in the right direction. That's exactly it. I love it. You're so good at that and making sure that you're asking the question so that people can also figure out what are wins. You know, maybe I, they walked an extra thousand steps if it's for the fat loss, mm -hmm. you know? Just getting them to be like, wow, those are all wins. I am making progress. I'm doing better than I was yesterday or last week. Right. And so as our coach, our job is not to just blow smoke up their ass. Our goal is to get them results. But as a coach, it's your duty to be able to zoom in and also zoom out on different parts yeah. of, you know, where they're at in their journey to keep them motivated. Next, track performance. We look at the data from the week for each of our clients and make sure everyone is on track with their goals. If not, we adjust accordingly. 
And we suggest that you do the same exact thing. Have your clients pop the hood on what they're doing and their action steps so that you know they can be held accountable socially with everyone else and also with you and you can troubleshoot things live on the call. Next, uncover and solve obstacles. We ask clients how we can help this week, what roadblocks are in the way that we can help them fix. Beautifully said. So just to recap, we first celebrated some wins, so everyone's feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. Number two, now we've got them critically thinking because they let us know their lessons learned. Then we've just taken stock of where everyone's at from tracking performance. So we now have context. Yep. Now it's time for them to ask us questions. And so this is the perfect time to have it in the sequence of your coaching call structure. Ex beautifully said. I don't have anything to add to that, Jay. You want to just give them some examples on how we respond to questions? Yeah, so when it comes to questions that our clients ask us, we learned this one the hard way as well. We have a consulting background, so we are used to going in and fixing right away. However, when it comes to coaching, it's really important to empower your clients and if they come with a question, help them think critically about that question to see if they can solve it on their own. So we respond with questions typically to help them think a little deeper about it. Beautifully said. Yeah. Yeah, so can we give an, an example? Sure. Like for example, if someone came to us and was like, hey, my stories just aren't performing well. I'm not getting book calls for my stories. What's wrong? The worst thing we could do is just come in and be like, oh, here's a problem right here. <laughs> no, as consultants, that's the right thing to do. Right. But as coaches, <laughs> that's not teaching them anything. That's solving the problem you know, putting a Band-Aid on it, but it's not teaching them anything. So how do we come a, how do we solve that question, basically? Great question. How do we, so, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, but <laughs> how do we come up to that? Yeah, so if somebody in our case is having trouble with their stories, the first thing we'd do is we'd pop the hood. We'd mm -hmm. go and we'd look at their stories like, okay, 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 I see, I see where there could be some issues. What do you think is the issue here? Do you see any holes in the system? And so then we let them kind of explain their thought process, invite them up on, we say, you know, take the floor, come up and explain to us, you know, what is your thought process through this? And typically through that process, they're able to answer their own question, which is so empowering. And just us as the coach, we're just helping them navigate and keeping those bumpers up so that they get to that solution, but think critically about it. Right, yes, just helping them get to the realization on their own is so much more powerful. And then typically when that happens, that mistake they were having is not recurring. So they've nipped it in the bud right away and you know, then we can work on other things that may need some work. Beautifully said. So yeah, when someone asks you a question, don't immediately jump to the answer because even though yes, you can solve it most likely, mm -hmm. it's so much better if you help them solve it for themselves. Yeah, great point. And finally, identify action steps. We give clients one to three action steps as homework. So this is so cool because then it's like after all these questions are being answered and worked through, they now have clear action steps defined by their coaches to go and do. And the one to three is so important yeah. because we don't want it to be overwhelming. And usually it's just really one action step. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. That's all they need to fix, not just this problem, but all these other recurring problems maybe that were happening because of this one problem. Anything to add? No, it's beautifully said. The reason why it's so important just to not overwhelm people and give them just one to three action steps, ideally just one, is because, I mean, it just keeps things simple and it also keeps them accountable because if everybody else on the call, if it's a group coaching call, hears that their one action step is lose a pound or whatever it is and yeah. they don't do it next week, everyone remembers what their action step was. That's exactly it. Social accountability and just the fact that all the best coaches in history, when they're training their, um, training their students or whoever they're working with, it's usually just about giving them one action step at a time, one piece of feedback at a time. Mm-hmm, because you have to remember too, they're learning something that's com probably completely new to them. And so if you give them more than three things to do to take action on, they're gonna be so overwhelmed. So I'm like, oh, I'm already struggling just with this one thing. How am I supposed to do all this other stuff? So stick to one to three action steps. Should we give them an example? Yeah. Coaching call session example template. First, touch on last week's wins like we talked about. So for example, Ricky, he got three clients, then Sophie got two book calls. At this point, everybody's fired up, everyone's jazzed, and the room is just electric. Everyone's in a great mood. 
then we move into lessons learned. So for example, if you go around the horn and ask everybody their lessons learned, make sure you're writing down everybody's, but mm -hmm. we're just gonna give you a couple examples right here. John, biggest lesson learned for John, consistency wins. Sarah, she realized that she's got a follow up. She's got a follow up to book more calls. So are you guys getting this a little bit? Anything you'd like to add? No, I, this is great. Let's keep it rocking. Next, track performance, like we talked about earlier. Everyone's on track for two to five clients a month. So like for us, that's what we're always, that's a measuring stick, the mm -hmm. ruler that we're always trying to adhere to every single week. Yeah, and so make sure everyone's on track. If not, like Jess said, pop the hood. Simple. Next, questions and obstacles. So what we wanna do here is let them ask their question and that we don't wanna immediately answer. We want to then ask them guiding questions so that ideally they could come to the realization and find the answer on their own. Exactly, just like we were talking about, empowering them to really figure out what the problem is and then answer that question themselves. Beautifully said. So for example, if Cindy's like, what's the best way to do stories? I think we just talked about that really well, so just rewind the tape a little bit. <laughs> Um, or Eric, how to overcome imposter syndrome. So the worst thing we could do here, just a reminder, is to just come and be like, well, here's how you get rid of imposter syndrome. One, two, three. Instead, be like, well, okay, good question. Why do you bring that up? And get more context from it. And then usually he'll be able to answer the question himself. That's exactly it. Great way, great work. Thanks, then last part, action steps. So you wanna just give people one to three action steps or marching orders for them to take into that next week or mm -hmm. even just to take into the next two days. Exactly, and you'll be checking in with them with daily accountability to hold them accountable to hitting those action steps. Right, exactly. So we could be like, John, your action step is hit your workflow. Sarah, your goal is to work five days a week. And we're gonna be checking in on you guys next week to make sure you did that sound good. <laughs> cool. Anything else you wanna to add to this? No, I think this is such a good coaching call session example. I mean, screenshot this and make sure you save it to your notes because this is what was the game changer in our business, just going through each of these steps to make all of our clients feel heard, solve their own problems, be empowered, and take action so they can get really great results in their coaching business, but for you maybe in their fat loss journey. Beautifully said. And so then in terms of coaching call recordings, mm -hmm. Where do we like to take down the notes for the call? And then how do we like to give them access to these calls, yeah, to great, these notes after the call? Great question. So we love using Google Slides and we write everything down on these slides and we are sharing screens so that everyone can see what we're doing. We kind of use it as like our whiteboard, if you will. And the beauty about using Google Slides is that if let's say we have uh, Johnny over here who is having some imposter syndrome mindset troubles that we need to work through. So and we have an entire slide that's just dedicated to imposter syndrome. Everyone's like, ooh, yeah, me too. Beautiful, let's work this out. And then at the end of the call, I can easily take a screenshot of this and send it to everybody afterwards. They have these quick notes and quick points to remember and turn back to. And then as far as coaching call recordings, always sharing those at the end of the call and getting those up as fast as possible so people can go and review the game tape. Beautifully said. Yeah, make sure that you're recording these calls and you're giving people access to anything specific mm -hmm. to them. Like that's a little bonus that we do. For example, you don't have to give slide screenshots to everybody, but for example, let's say that Johnny on the spot was just having trouble with yeah. um, imposter syndrome then you can just take a screenshot when we talked about an imposter syndrome and just give that to Johnny. You don't have to give it to everybody, just who asked for it. Exactly, exactly it. Should we tie a bow on it? Yeah, let's tie a bow on it. So that's all we have for this video, you guys. If you have any questions on this, go ahead and post them below. And if you want our personal help or if you want our banging coaching call session templates and examples straight into your coaching business, go ahead and book a call below. We are stoked to chat with you. Other than that, we will see you in the next video.